the entire country. So that would be the equivalent of a foreigner coming to the United States and referring to the President of the United States as the White House. They don't know that they don't know. And they're teaching you now. So we've got to do some research so that we can learn to question. You should learn to question everybody. There's nothing wrong with questioning people. We live in a society of ideas. We have a marketplace of ideas. And everyone should have the right and the opportunity to present your ideas in the marketplace of the general public. And with questioning, you will find out whether or not your ideas will stand up to the test of questions. And if they don't, you need to sit down and shut up and let someone else introduce information that will prove to be a valuable use to people of color. So, I was sharing with uh, my brother Brad this morning, we were driving around the streets of Philly. So, you know, I travel a lot throughout the United States. And everywhere I go, I see our people, African people, at the bottom in every society. It doesn't matter where I go in this country, we're always at the bottom. And I can always tell when I'm in the hood, because I see liquor stores, I see fast food restaurants, and I see churches on every corner. And at some point, at some point, we have to begin to do an analysis. If we've been praying to the God that was given to us by our former enslavers, and we still have not achieved parity, equality, health, wealth, and stability, then maybe we call it the wrong God. Because if you had a car and it wasn't running properly and you took it to a mechanic and he fixed it and charged you five hundred dollars and after you got the car back it was in worse shape than it was in before, would you take it back to that second mechanic? No. So why would you share? Why would you allow your spiritual essence to be determined and guided by someone who has not proven their work? All right. Okay. So. What I want us to look at, what I want us to understand, is that the current interest in the secret affords us an opportunity to study and decode the secrets of the secret. To begin to ask critical questions so that we can achieve the answers that we have been searching for all of our lives. And this whole process is significant for me because I've devoted the last 30 years of my life to studying African history folk. Uh, next month, I'll be making my 40th trip to Egypt, and that's since 1980. And so in my travels to Kemet, I have found a reason for living. I have found a meaning to life. I have found answers which have allowed me to chart my course through history. And it's through my lectures, it's through my books, it's through my other materials that I now make this information available to others who may not ever have the opportunity to travel to Kimmy. You may not be able to physically go there, but you can mentally go there once you ingest information which frees your mind and gives you the past in a positive perspective that you can bring to. Thank you. That's what we need. That is what we are searching for. And so, what I want to do... Um, my studies of, of African history and culture have allowed me to develop the skill as a historical detective. You know? And so what I want to do now, in the spirit of one of the most popular te programs on television, CSI, yes. you know for me with CSI, yes. crime scene investigators, I want to take a page out of CSI. <laughs> and I want to do a forensic analysis of the secret for your personal edification. Because what you notice in CSI, crime scene investigator, a crime has been committed. Yeah, yeah. So this team of scientists comes to the crime scene and they gather evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. Gather evidence here and there. Take photographs, document the crime scene. Then they go back into their laboratory. Right. They do an analysis of all of this data and then they present it to the detectives who then know who committed the crime and pursue them. So we must apply the same principle to the secret. So in order for me to do this, I need five folk. We have five volunteers. Let's go up one, two, young lady. 
Sister, come on, three, brother, four, one here, five, five, four, come up here. And I want you all, what I want to do is to allow my five people here to represent the timeline, a historical timeline. So I've got these dates. Brother, uh, let, me, let me have a little sister here. Sister, I want you to represent the year zero. All right. And I want you to stand right here. Brother, I want you to represent the year 2007, the current year. And I want you to stand against that wall right there. Care for the courts. Uh, sister, I want you to represent the year 30 BC. I want you to stand right here. No, I actually want you to stand right here, 30 BC. Brother, I want you to represent 332 BC. I want you to stand right here. And sister, I want you to represent 3000. BC. I want you to stand. Go outside the middle. <laughs> <laughs> all the way over here. Oh. Right. So this is our timeline. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I want to do an analysis of the secret based upon this timeline. And I want these people to be our, our reference point. Now Kemet was fully developed by 3000 BC. Already had the alphabet. It already begun building temples. The pyramids, great pyramids of Khufu, great pyramid of uh, Saqqara, uh, pyramid designed by Imhotep for King Zoser, was built around 2900 BC. So right up here. And then less than 160 years later, the three pyramids at Giza were built. The greatest architectural monuments in the history of humanity. The Greeks did not come into Kemet as invaders until 332 BC. All right? After everything had been built, the Greeks came as conquerors. They did not add anything new. The Greeks only had control of Kemet for a little less than 300 years before the Greeks were conquered by the Romans. The Romans came in in 30 BC. And so everything that the Greeks had stolen from the Kemites. This represents today the year zero when Jesus, quote unquote, was born. And then this is 2007, where we are right now. So this is our timeline. This is our timeline. So what I want us to do, let's do this. Hi, guys, you got a piece of tape? Oh, here it is. I got some. What I want to do is to post this timeline so that you all can use it as a visual reference as I talk about the secrets. So can you just take this on that wall? Uh, sister, can you put this right here? This is the year zero. And can you put this on the other end of the podium right here? This is 30, you see. And can you put this right here? And can you take your piece to Wall. So this is our timeline. All right, thank you all very much. This is our timeline. of the secret. Okay? So I want to go back to the images in the dramatization of the secret DVD and break that down from for you from a historical perspective so that you can understand what the secret is really all about. Okay? The secret begins. The secret DVD begins.